Hey, what's up everyone? It's Dubbase here. Are you looking for a reserve loot guide that mixes PvP with high tier loot? Well, look no further. Over the past couple of weeks, I've been trying to approach reserve like a Chad. And this means that I rush the high tier loot locations to try to get the best loot on the map first and pack my bags completely full before extracting. In this video, I'm going to cover what keys you need, a general strategy to follow, and an exact building breakdown in which I cover my exact route that I run through the buildings and the precise spots that I check to ensure that I leave nothing behind. Let's jump right into it. Let's start first by talking about the overall general strategy for this Chad loot run. The strategy for this loot run is really quite simple. Right off of spawn, you're going to rush to one of three main primary buildings that contain some of the highest loot on the map. Those three buildings are the King Building for its abundance of military tech, as well as graphics cards and Tetris, Black Bishop for the infamous drop-down room in which graphics card and Tetris frequently spawn, and lastly, Black Pawn for the RBBK marked room in which ultra high tier loot can spawn like Asa, grenade launchers, med cases, dog tags cases, and more. In addition to carrying the keys for all three of the primary buildings, I also included key sets for two additional secondary buildings to loot. And the reason for this is because I find that often my bags are not completely full and there's very frequently missed loot in these buildings. The additional buildings that I included to loot in this run are White Bishop, for its abundance of medical supplies, and White Pawn for the two locked rooms that include weapon attachments as well as ammo, and there are some loose intelligence spawns as well. Once your bags are almost full, then it's time to start moving for the extract. For this guide, I suggest extracting at Dome slash Queen, and this will require the Red Rebel Ice Pick. If you don't have Red Rebel yet, don't worry, it's not a big deal. You can do this exact same loot run, but just switch dome for D2. I personally love ending my run at dome because there are four keys that I use up there to truly fill my bags to every last slot. The one exception to this strategy is if you get a B building spawn, in which I did include the keys so you can loot the marked room in the B buildings, as well as the adjacent weapons room as well. After looting the B buildings, I suggest cutting straight through the K buildings and going right to King to resume the normal strategy. If you're interested in using the map that I created for this exact loot run, just a heads up that that's in the description below. And I am also crediting the original author of this map and providing a link to the original map as well. Before jumping straight into the building breakdown, I did want to cover the keys that I use a little bit more in depth. I do carry a sick case with me in my gamma container. And if you don't have a sick case, you will need to cut two of these keys out. I would suggest one of these three keys, either RBKSM from White Bishop, RBRS from Dome or RBGN from King. If you want and you do have more space, you can also add keys like RBST to loot the weapon room in Long Garage, which can have Asa spawns. But I find this key is a little bit overpriced for what I get, and the chance of getting those high tier loot Asa and OFZ shells is quite low. To kick off our building breakdown, Let's first start with the King building. Now, King is arguably the most important building on the entire map, and I'm entering through the White Bishop side directly into the main server room. When you're in the main server room, look carefully at each of the server racks, including on top of the server racks as a found military circuit boards, and in between server racks, there can be loose loot on the floor as well. Next to the toppled over server racks, there is actually a 
potential high tier loot tech spawn in the floor, so check carefully, as well as behind the toppled racks and on the chairs. After looting the main server room, I move to what I call mini server room. Same deal here, you just look very carefully at each of the server racks and keep an eye out for loose tech. Right across from mini server room, you'll find what I call intel room. There's a possible intel spawn on the desk as well as the cabinet. And after looting that room, I go through the great door and head straight for the basement. Upon entering the basement, you'll encounter the first locked room in King, and this is the RBGN key, and inside you'll find two toolboxes, as well as a possible military battery tech spawn. Heading out of that, the second locked room is in the larger room adjacent to it, and in this locked room, you can find an intelligence spawn on the desk, possible rare loot on the shelves, and another intelligence spawn on the chair. In the large room, there's also a duffel bag and a kitted AK spawn on the chair. Before leaving, if you want, you could also hit the duffel bag in the bathroom. Heading out of the basement, we now head to the second floor. I used to not loot here, but I do really quickly now. On the green crates next to the stairwell, there's a possible military tech spawn, and I head straight for the large room at the end of the hall. There can be a possible graphics card or Tetris on the floor, so look carefully. After looting the second floor, I head straight for the third floor, and right to the left off the stairwell, you'll find a utility closet where you can find things like water filter and fuel. I loot this quickly and then head typically for the end of the hallway now to check for the intelligence spawn on the long desk. After that, the room right next to the largest room has possible meds on the shelves, and the room next to that has ammo spawns as well as a duffel bag that you can hit. After looting the main section of the building on the third floor, I then head to the annex, where if you turn left after going into the hallway, you'll find another utility closet, which has similar spawns like water filters and fuel, as well as a spawn in the lamp and possible tech spawns on the metal shelves. Before heading down into the garage server, server room, I do sometimes loot the roof, usually only when I'm confident that there's not anyone sniping at dome, and I just look really quickly right on top where the radar is to see if the military tech spawn was there. Then I go straight downstairs again, and I go and take a look from the third floor into the garage server room to see if there are any enemies before heading down the metal staircase. Once inside the garage server room, it's the same deal as usual. I look very carefully at all of the server racks because it seems like there's a billion different spawns here where you can find military tech and GPUs, Tetris, all of the great stuff that we're really, really looking for. Before leaving this area, make sure you check the metal shelves as I very frequently find military tech there as well. That about wraps it up for King. Let's move now to the next primary building. The next primary loot location that we're going to be breaking down is Black Bishop. You'll see here that I am entering via the jump up, but you could also go up the metal awning and jump in on the first floor. We are now on the third floor in the weapons room, and I always check down the hallway before looking at what spawned. You can have some great weapon attachments that spawn on that green box. And I always loot the four main rooms on the third floor before heading to the second floor. On this first room with the computers, I check on the chair, I check next to the computer, and I check next to another computer, and then head back into the room adjacent, in which I check carefully on the metal shelving unit, and I will head to the room to its diagonal on the opposite side and check the other metal shelving unit for possible military tech spawns. You'll see here that I found filter and MGT. You would be surprised how much this type of loot is left behind. The final room that I loot on the third floor is the the one that leads to the drop down, but I would not suggest dropping down. Look carefully next to the toolbox and on the desk across from the toolbox for military tech spawns and watch dome to make sure that you don't get popped. This is where the drop down is, but again, I typically don't take this. Instead, I head for the second floor, use the RBAK key that I included, and once inside the room, take a look at the shelving units as well as the desks for Tetris and graphics cards. You'll see that I found one here. And look around quickly, but I wouldn't hang around. If you want, you could additionally also loot the computers in here, but this is just 
prime picking for a dome sniper to pick you off. After looting RBAK, head down to the first floor and you can then hit the RBAM room. This is one of the most underrated rooms in my opinion. The key price is up there, but not too expensive. It's got three toolboxes, an intelligence spawn on the stool, weapon parts that spawn on the desk, as well as a military tech spawn. And there's a possible FP100 air filter spawn in this room as well. Don't forget about the jacket before leaving this and you're done with Black Bishop. Speaking of underrated areas of Black Bishop, I also wanted to bring your attention to a new intelligence spawn that I just discovered recently. It's in the underground basement part, which needs to be entered from the outside like I did here, or you can enter from the cafeteria. I actually love this area, but if you go to one of the D2 entrances, as you'll see here, enter this room, right next to these coffee cups, there's an intelligence spawn. I have never seen this on the wiki nor anywhere else on YouTube, so I wanted to bring your attention to it. The last remaining primary loot location that we're going to cover is Black Pawn. Now, the number one spot to hit is the marked room, so I run straight for the basement, but before just going straight into the marked room and opening it up, check all of these cheeky areas. Check the bathroom. I always close the gym door to make sure I'm not going to get pushed from in there and also the utility closet. And if you want also the entrance down into D2, I will close as well. Then loot the marked room. And when within the marked room, typically everything spawns down on the floor, but there can be random items on the couch as well as the tables and look carefully for ammo that spawns in the blood spatter as well. After hitting the marked room, I then move to hit the RBTB weapons room, and there are two primary locations to loot in here. The first is on the desk within the light, as well as next to the wall, there can be more weapon attachments that spawn there as well. And of course, within the weapon racks, you can find AKs and other stuff similar. After looting these two underground locations, I move through the gym. You could hit the duffel bag if you want. And from the gym, I take the opposite side stairs up to the second floor, where you can use one of the ORB keys to open the locked weapons room up here. Once you enter ORB3, there are two shelving units that can spawn nice weapon attachments and also a shelving unit that can spawn ammo. Additional ammo spawns are on the green crates and then I immediately move for the third floor. This is the RBOB key. It's got an intelligence spawn as well as some rare loot spawns like chainlets, etc. I've never found intel in here, but I always check. And I've also heard that you can additionally find intel in this loose room right above ORB3, but I've again, I've never personally found this. And at this cabinet with the candles, I've also heard that you can find intelligence. So check these out and let me know if you ever find these on the third floor. After hitting the third floor, it's time to get out of this building and move to your next loot location. Now that we've covered all three of the primary loot locations, let's now jump into the secondary loot locations, starting first with White Bishop. I always enter through this front door and I don't close the door behind me because I don't want to give any other player knowledge that I might have been in here. I go in through the first floor, head straight to the second, I check left first, I always look down the hallway before heading to the RBSMP key. This is one of the most expensive keys for reserve and it's worth it. There's a lot of great possible medical supplies that you can find, including SJ6, morphine, CMS kits, Serve 12, Salewa, ophthalmoscopes. Always look very carefully on the floor as well as I found that there's a lot of medical items that can spawn in this mess and rubble on the floor. And then move quickly down the hallway to the RBKSM key. This key, I've said before, it's usually garbage. There can be some loose medical supplies like saline in here, but I usually just go in to check what spawned as well as hit the duffel bag. Since I'm in here anyways, you might as well hit it. After hitting the two locked rooms, I go to the roof, drop through to hit this large weapons box. This is a nice type of weapons box and can have nice spawns in it, so I do like to check it out every time. To get back out, you slide through the top, and then after looting the upstairs, I head straight for the basement. I'll show you here though, make sure you know about this hole in the wall, drop down from the second floor. I kill a lot of players that don't know about it, and then I will head to the basement through the same stairway that we went to 
to the second floor and head straight back to look on this desk. There's a possible intelligence spawn here in the same area. There's a green weapons box if you want to hit it. And then if you head to the other side of the basement, there's this large medicine room in which lots of loose loot med supplies can spawn. In this run, it was only a morphine, but I do like coming down here and I hit the little med box as well. After looting all of this, head back upstairs and you're done with White Bishop. We'll jump on over now to White Pawn. This is the location that I usually hit before heading to Dome for Extract, and my typical route, I enter and head straight for the basement. Once downstairs, head into the unlocked great door and check on the folders to see if any intelligence spawned and look for any loose ammo, then head straight for the fourth floor. I go to the fourth floor because there is another intelligence spawn on this box with candles, as you see it spawn during this run. I take a peek on the right side of this divider to see if anybody was up on the first floor with me, and then I head straight for the locked room here, which is one of the ORB keys. Before going in, you can check the room right next to it on the left for any loose ammo. Sometimes I find BS ammo in here. Upon entering ORB1, check carefully on the floor for a possible intelligence spawn, and right next to that, there are loose weapon attachments, and against the wall, there are possible ammo spawns. Then, you can head straight for the second floor to unlock ORB2, which is another weapon room. It's a little bit different. It seems the loot isn't quite as good. There are possible weapon attachments on the shelves, as well as on the opposite side, possible ammo spawns, and then a long rectangular weapons box, as well as one of the square boxes. After that, it's easy. You're done with White Pawn. Head down to the first floor, and you're out. As I mentioned during the strategy section of this video, I end all of my runs at Dome slash Queen. Before looting the actual building itself, I always loot the two guard desks if they're unlooted, and often the locked one is, and there are two entrances. This is the back entrance, KPRL key to get in here. Once inside, there is a mini safe which can spawn rare items. On top of the safe next to that, there's a possible intel spawn, and on the desk, another possible intel spawn. I check within the weapon racks, and there's also a long rectangular weapons box as well. The guard desk to the right of that is unlocked, and it's sort of like a nerfed version. It also has a safe, possible intel spawn on top of the safe. To the right of the water cooler, there's another possible intel spawn. There's a computer, there's a tall weapon safe which you can check. In the green box, there's a possible weapon attachment spawn. Moving outside, there's a green weapons box, and then I head straight into dome. Once within, there is a duffel bag. I check to see if it's been looted. Then I head straight to the third floor to see if that door has been opened. If it hasn't been opened, it's very possible that this has not been looted. Then carefully check to see if any of the doors are open on the second floor, and then you'll open your first key, which is RBKORL. Once within, I check the desk really quickly for a possible intel, as well as on top of the cabinets for a possible intel. Then I move straight to the next locked door to the right. This is the RLSSA key. There are two possible intel spawns that I've found in here. First is on the desk, and then the second is on the desk to the left of it. Then right behind the desks on the shelves, there are many possible military tech spawns. Sometimes you get nothing, sometimes you get four military tech there, so I always loot that room. It's the best one. The other room here is RBRS. Within, there's two toolboxes and some loose, low-level tech spawns, like relays can spawn in here. If you're near full, I usually just skip this room, but I'm including it since I think it's worth always filling your bags. After looting that, I head straight to the third floor to check the last intel spawn, as well as in the room across from the stairwell, there are some possible weapon spawns as well as ammo spawns. I check for BS ammo, and then I head straight for the couches that are at the back of dome. Be careful because if someone is in here, they've heard you this whole time, and they're probably waiting for you up here. The couch on the right has the intel spawn, and then there's a duffel bag on the left. After checking for the intel, then it's time to head back to the first floor to get ready to extract. I don't like to use the third floor fire escape to get to the extract. There is a possible intel spawn on the desk here. These shelves have some tool spawns. There's another intel spawn on the desk through the doorway. Military tech spawn right where I'm aiming there. And then I'm heading straight for the extract, and it's time to go with the Red Rebel. As we're now nearing the end of the video, 
I did want to say, this is my version of a Chad loot run, and this is original content. I didn't take this from another streamer. I didn't repurpose any other content. This came from my brain and through my gameplay. So if you do something different, I'd love to hear from you. Consider joining the discussion in the comments below. Otherwise, please, I invite you to stay tuned for more great Escape from Tarkov content coming soon. And please consider subscribing to make sure that you don't miss it. Stay safe out there, and I'll catch you next time.